<laughs> All right. Today, uh, Avon and Mario, we have on our podcast, Building Minds, Builds Community. We have Mr. Jeff Barrett, owner and operator of Headquarters Barbershop and Salon, and he's been the owner of this magnificent pillar in the community for over 25 years. And he's going to share with us today about being a husband and a father and a community leader, uh, being very involved in the community. He's going to talk about uh, some of his experience in the Gulf War. He is a Gulf War uh, veteran, Marine Corps, of course. And then he's going to talk about the community, how we can help improve our community here in Oslo County and other communities around the state and around the country. Mr. Jeff Barrett. Yes, sir. Thank you all for having me. And uh, I try to be as brief as possible. But as far as the <laughs> Gulf War, um, <clears throat> we went to the Gulf War, I want to say uh, 89, um, yeah, 90, I'm sorry, 90, like December of 90. And we stayed there for like uh, five months. And uh, they took us out there the uh, week before Christmas. <laughs> and then we we sat in the uh, tent city for like um about a month before any any action actually took place um i think that might have been part of the uh, bad part of it just sitting there in anticipation you know not knowing what's going on you know you're in a, a foreign country and you, you don't know what's next you don't know what the next day might hold um but the best part of it uh was the camaraderie and and the uh, the friendship that you build in a time of combat, you know, with those guys, it's, it's a lot different from just being in garrison and uh, going going to the shop every day um, and um, working on weapons, or PM in your gear and stuff. It's a whole lot different. I feel in that combat environment, you build a special bond with those individuals within your um within your platoon <clears throat> or within your within your battery. And we were in firing batteries. Uh, but the absolute worst part of it was probably uh, once we did um, start putting rounds down range. I was in artillery, of course. I was a comm guy working in the FDC. My job was to um, communicate with the the, the forward, for, forward observer, which is a grunt, and he's about five to ten miles ahead of us, and he's picking out targets for um, for the uh, the guns to shoot at. And what we do, we, we relay the information back to the gun line so they can adjust their guns according to um, his target. And if their round is off, of course, he give them direction on how, how far the round missed and they'll make adjustments to put the gun on the target and put rounds on the target. But the worst part was after you do all that shooting, you know, you got to advance up, you know, maybe five or six miles further, closer to, um, to the enemies. And then once you move up, you get to see the damage, you know, that those guns actually caused. You know, you see the tanks blowing up. You see houses uh, torn all to pieces. And you can smell uh, dead flesh in the air. And that's that's probably the worst part of it. Um, for everybody who was over there with us, that was the absolute worst part because you had to pass through and see all the destruction that, that those uh, artillery rounds caused. Um, but that's a pretty much a, a wrap on the uh, on the Gulf War, um, on my Gulf War experience. Of course, there's a whole lot more to talk about, <clears throat> but I don't want to bore you guys to death about the Gulf War. <laughs> <laughs> what was the next? You got a question? Any questions on that Gulf War? Uh, 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 no, none, because it, it's a rabbit hole we can go down to, and, and uh, <laughs> we don't want to be late to get to the good stuff. You know, I mean, talking about the community and. And what you've done for this community, so okay. Uh, as far as the community, um, I, of course, I do a lot of work here in the community, being involved in so many of the um, Masonic, Masonic organizations, uh, and that's what we're about. We're about community service. We're about charity. Uh, we're about giving back um, to the community, and we have um, a mentoring program where we mentor young men <clears throat> between the ages of eight and eighteen. And uh, most of the time, they're from a single parent home. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are from um, 
home to have both parents. And the child just may um, need another outlet. <clears throat> you know how you could be in a situation where uh, someone else could say something to your child and it seemed like they'll listen, but you can say it to them and it seemed like they'll just blow you off, you know? Mm -hmm. so it'd be like, I know so that. Yeah, you know, we all experienced that, you know, just like uh, being a coach, you know, I coach football, basketball, and have coach base baseball too. But, you know, my son, I can tell him this, I can tell him that, and this thing like it goes in this ear and right out this one. Then one of the other coaches can say, hey, Jordan, I need for you to do this right here a little bit better. And just like that, he's doing it better, you know, for the other coach. But that's, that's just one of those things. He just tried to hear my mouth. He hear it every day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like where we step in as, as mentors, you know, to provide that extra outlet for this young man who may just need, you know, this extra person to talk to or this extra person to let him know that he's important and that he can make it if he just uh, put forth his, his best effort. You know what I mean? And also on the female side of the house with our female organization, they offer the same things for the young girls uh, in the community as well. And we also provide um, scholarships for those um, those graduating seniors and even those who, who've already graduated who are in college already, they can also apply for our scholarships every year too. Amazing. Yeah. All right. So uh, being a husband and, and being a father and the different personalities that, you know, that your kids have, you know, uh, how interesting is that? I mean, are there, I know there's no two alike, but are any of them, do, do any of their personalities, are they any, similar in any way? Um, I can say um, with, um, my oldest son, uh, Jaquan, and uh, my second oldest, uh, Jamal, they have similar personalities. You know, they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty quiet, uh, low key guys. Um, but they work, they work hard. You know, and uh, they always, they always want to be sharp every time they step out of the house. You know, they want to be the sharpest dude. You know, they got to have the um, the cleanest sneakers. You know. They stuff got to be pressed out, you know, which I like. I like that, you know, at least they ain't walking around with the pants hanging off the tail, you know, so they like being neat. So they, they share some of the same vibes, some of the same characteristics. Um, but my girls, uh, all of the, all my girls are different. You know, they have totally <laughs> different personalities. Um, and you know how it is trying to raise girls. Man. That's, that's never easy. I'll, I'll take five boys over one girl any day. <laughs> 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 and um and plus you know we had a, a an added added experience with um uh, when I met, when I met my my wife uh she already had a son um when we met he was like 7 years old and he's like 23 now so that was a that was a serious challenge you know um you know sometimes you have a child who you know they get into that mood where you know you're not you're not my father you can't tell me what to do you know that type of stuff even though they living in your house and eating your food you know <laughs> and burning up your electricity you know and every time they need something they ask you for it but you're gonna say that you know you're my father so we went through that little thing a little thing over a couple of years and over the years um we have a pretty good relationship that has developed now um and he called me dad now I'm like it ain't nothing Amen. You know? and um so that that was a really that was a really um, tough test for for me and the wife. You know, that's that was a real challenge, and uh, I think uh, we we can we conquered that uh, that challenge. Uh, it's a lot easier today than it was um, ten years ago. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, so I think if uh, we got past that with him and his attitude, man, I think we can survive anything uh, with with our marriage now. Yeah. And uh, me, uh, also with him, he he, he turned over completely a new leaf. You know, he's in he's in college now. He's uh, enrolled in the HVAC program. Um, this guy he did a whole one eighty, y'all. So I thank the Lord for that. That's uh, right. He was, he was definitely headed, you know, down the wrong path. And uh, he seemed to have his head screwed on right now. He's working two jobs to pay pay his way through through his tuition and all that. So you know, I, I applaud him now. I've always encouraged them, 
but we, we, we have that great relationship now, you know, where he can call to me about anything now. So uh, through your experiences and whatnot, how much of your, of your experiences and, and, and uh, your personality do you say you've poured into your children? Uh, well, I try to pour all my experiences into them, you know, they don't always listen. They don't always, they don't always, uh, you know, ingest it. They don't always uh, accept it. Well, I, I put it out there because I don't want them to, you know, make all the same mistakes I made. Just like, you know, I'm serious. I don't want your kids to make the same mistakes you made. Right. But, you know, uh, um, life teaches us that, you know, experience is the best teacher. <laughs> you know, so when you don't listen to the, to the advice that, you know, the parent gives you, then um, experience will teach you, you know, that maybe you should have took took dad advice, or maybe you should have took mom's advice. Um, but I, I like I said, I try to pour it into you. Know, a couple of them accepted it. A couple of them listened, listened to what I had to say. You know, and a couple of them avoided. You know, some situations that I didn't avoid when I was coming up at that same age. You know, I, I guess they they um a lot of times they feel like that we never lived before. That we just talking just to be talking. You know, <laughs> but we explained to them every day. We already been there and done that. Okay, I mean, y'all might say it in a different way now. It might be a slang now, but we've done all this before. You know, listen to what I'm saying, and sometimes it clicks, and sometimes it, it doesn't click. So, so uh, have any of them taken on the uh, entrepreneurial uh, reins like you have, and you know, started up their own thing? Um, not as as of yet. But um, my second oldest, uh, Jamal, uh, he's graduating from uh, North Carolina A&T uh, in December. And uh, he did say that he's um, looking into um, starting his own business. He, he does uh, freelance photography uh, already on the side. Okay. And, um, he's going to be a graphics art, a graphic arts uh, major. And uh, he's, he's talking about doing his own thing once he get out. And I'm here to help, you know. Uh, none of them want to be barbers. So I don't know why, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I ain't mad at them. But um, you know, if they want to come back to barbering later on, I'll be happy with it. But uh, for right now, none of them want to cut hair. <laughs> hey, that's a recession-proof business. I don't know why they don't want to get on it. I'm telling you, it's just like the funeral home, man. You know, they're gonna need us. <laughs> you know, they're gonna need us. Uh, even though nowadays, you know. The, uh, they come out with all these new new little styles, you know, I guess looking nappy and naughty is in style now, as long as you got an edge <laughs> up. You know? So um, I'm sure that'll pass, you know, and they go back to being neat, you know, because uh, history always kind of like repeats itself when it comes down to different styles and all this stuff. Um, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, the Afros and stuff were out, you know, they done brought them back again. Only thing now, they just keep them nappy for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, um, so I, I got a couple of questions for you. Uh, okay. and as far as the, on the community aspect or whatnot, and I've I've done done some research and seen some of the things. Like obviously, you're, I, I would say, a landmark in Jacksonville, being here since 1994. Um, you know, I mean, I don't think there's a person in Jacksonville who can't say they've come, not come through your shop at least to get a cut or something. Right. But uh, things you've done in the community, as far as like even – uh, giving out COVID vaccinations in your shop, the the youth basketball uh, outreach and whatnot, and then uh, obviously the mentoring. Um, but what, what was your motivation uh, to, to get out there and do that and, and affect change in the community? Well, I mean, like, I guess it was like from where I'm, where I'm from, a small town called Aiden, North Carolina. It's about 10 miles from Greenville. And, you know, we didn't really have a lot of um, – a lot of the men in the community, you know, really stepping up and being like examples for the for the, for the boys who were like in the single parent homes. You know, we didn't we didn't have that coming up. You know, we we kind of uh, I can't even say we got lucky, but I can say that you know we, we were blessed to turn out you know as good as we did because we definitely didn't have um, any any mentors going on around there. We didn't have a lot of a lot of sports programs either. You know, it was on like one little small rec uh, program. And 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 the coaches weren't really uh, into it with the with the boys with the young men, you know. It's it's a, to me it's more it's more to coaching than just you know trying to run a play. You know, you got to be this guy's teacher. You know, you got to teach him not just about the sport but about 
about discipline, about, you know, life situations and all that stuff. You know, all of that should just should tie in with the sports as far as I'm concerned. But we weren't we weren't getting that back then. And I wanted to be one of those guys who uh, who did it for what community I decided to uh, to live in. And, the, and your, your mentorship program, is that is that the, an outreach program or is that primarily through uh, inter, interaction with people who come into the shop to get services? No, no, it's uh, it's through the um through my Masonic uh, organizations. Uh, I belong to like four different Masonic organizations, uh, including the Shriners, and I'm a 33rd also. Each one of those organizations offer uh, mentoring programs, and each one of those each one of those organizations also offer scholarships uh, to the young men and women going out of school. Yeah. yeah. Now, did, did you receive any feedback from the community or, or even from the, the county uh, as far as you, uh, uh, you know, supporting the community by giving out the COVID vaccinations there and stepping up uh, and doing that just to, you know, I mean, keep the community healthy and, and keep things running? No, I didn't. I didn't really get any feedback from from the uh, from any officials in the county or the city or whatever. And to me personally, you know, it's not really not really what I was looking for anyway. You know, I just mm -hmm. wanted to be. A, make my spot available because we have a couple of communities right here behind the barbershop, uh, like Sandy Run. We got uh, across the street, we got, um, you know, black communities where they don't really uh, feel comfortable going, you know, out to uh, the hospital or to a doctor's mm -hmm. office or whatever and um, getting these vaccines, but they feel more comfortable. They come here already for a haircut and they see the nurse and the doctor and stuff in here, you know, offering vaccinations. And it's it's just much easier, and it's more trustworthy to me to them. You know what I mean? They feel more comfortable coming in here and going into the little salon room and getting it done. Uh, it's just an added convenience to the to the people that live real close here, and a lot of them don't really have cars, so this mm -hmm. shop the shop is in walking distance for for them. So you know, I just wanted to be that that little convenience for them. Man, I highlighted that because there were there were very few organizations like yourself or or business, privately owned businesses in town. That offered that service. Uh, most of, most of them were referred to. You go to Walmart or Walgreens, CVS, or on base. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, for you to open up your shop and, and provide that service was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Headquarters barbershop. You know, I I remember when uh, you know when we you know Wanda and Pat it was working together and then we met. You know, this was back in the uh, in the in the mid late, you know, early nineties, and then we actually ended up staying in the same, <laughs> staying in the same area. You know, um, yeah, you know, I used to, you know, I used to enjoy the spirits a little bit, and uh, you know, I, I remember one time, you know, I was at your house and we was, you know, we was drinking and talking, and and I think we we had got something for the first time. And uh, when I left, because, you know, normally we would leave, you know, wh whoever brought the bottle, you leave it at the house or whatever. But that <laughs> night when I left, you was like, take this with you. <laughs> you know, you and I, we've been brothers for a long time, man. We, we, we've been brothers for a long time. And um, you have never failed me. Meaning, whenever I needed you, when, regardless of what it was for, you have always been there. And if you didn't have that resource, you would lead me or guide me to somebody that could help me. So, I, you know, brother, I always, I just want to say I appreciate you. I appreciate your family. I know your family. Um, I appreciate what you have done in the city of Jacksonville and the county of Onslow, because as Avon said, a lot of businesses did not do that. And and of, and of course that's their choice. Uh, if they if it's just about making money, you know that that's where some people live at, and and that's fine. But honestly, if you want to make more money, then care about the people in the community. Show Absolutely. them that you care, um, because think about think about if we think about our kids, right? There are some families that we probably would have never communicated with, broke bread with, spent time with, but our kids played on teams together. Mm -hmm. right? They went to a school together. And then as we're standing around, we start communicating with these different uh, people from different backgrounds and people that don't look like us. And see, that's what community is all about. 
Yep. That's community. Absolutely. You know, I mean, take, you know, people have to say, you know what? If there's, if so, I go to work. You know what? I'm gonna talk to somebody that I never talked to before on my job. I'm gonna find out a little bit about them and about their background or whatever. See that that's how we grow community, understanding that we're all people and we all need each other. Mm -hmm. You know, the the self made mantra. That's that's a false. That's a lie. There's no such thing as self made for anything positive. For negative, you can be self-made. You can be self-made in regards of something negative. But with Headquarters Barbershop, you went through the barber school. The previous owner of Headquarters Barbershop, and he had the school, right? Right. And he saw something in you. He saw something in you. Out of all them students that he that he had, had mentored and that he had trained and, and developed, but he saw something in you. And that's how the opportunity that happened over 20 years ago and now in July of 2022, Headquarters Barbershop is a staple in the city of Jacksonville, North Carolina. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's community. And, and I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being a staple in the community, being a place where you can go and get your, get your hair cut, or, or ladies can get their hair done and, and you can get some information uh, about about different things that's going on in the community. You can get you a few laughs. You know, you can, if, if, it's, if, it's set, laughs. <laughs> if it's if it's September through, through January, you can watch Alabama beat up on somebody. Oh, Lord. <laughs> hey, or, hey, or if it's November through March, you can watch them Tar Heels. You know, oh, yeah. hey. <laughs> you, you, you can you can do all that in there, and and I love going there. You know, I you know I, as you can say, I don't have no hair, but I go there because of our relationship, right? You know, and my relationship with the other barbers in there. That's why I go there because I I, I can learn about things that you know I wouldn't find nowhere else. And and you and you all are giving that to the community. Yeah. You all are giving that. You all are cutting hair, cutting hair of, of little boys. And then if they stay in this area, they become teenagers. And now, you know, you all are celebrating with the family when these, these young men are graduating high school and going off to yeah. college. Yeah. You know, so Headquarters Barbershop is a blessing to the city and the, and the county, you know. Absolutely. And if, if anyone is in Jacksonville, you have in Jacksonville, North Carolina, Headquarters Barbershop and Salon is across the street from Jacksonville Mall. So if you're there, if you're ever there, stop in, see my big brother, see the other barbers in there, and just let them know and say, you know what, I was watching this on Facebook or YouTube or whatever outlet you've seen it on. And I, I mm -hmm. and especially if you're a Marine, we know you're going to come through. Oh, yeah. Whether you right. want to or not, you come through eventually. <laughs> yeah, eventually. All right, you got anything else, Avon? No, I said, uh, my first haircut as a Marine uh, in the fleet, uh, not even in the fleet, still in school, was at headquarters barbershop. Um, I, it was it was May of 2002. Um, remember it like yesterday. Um, got my first haircut in there. And every time I came back to Jacksonville up until I turned 25 when I went bald, <laughs> that's where I went to get my haircut. Um it, 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 it wasn't even it wasn't even a thought. Headquarters Barbershop is like I said a pillar and a beacon in this community, mm -hmm. and and that's where my son goes. They got amazing barbers in there, except for that Cincinnati Bengals fan in there. Oh <laughs> Lord, don't give him no shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that Bengals fan in there, man, him go at it all the time. But, uh, <laughs> but I tell you what, I, I thank you for everything you've done for this community, I, and I thank you for continuing to do what you do and 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 setting an example for. Young, young men and women in, in, in this city and this county. No doubt. I appreciate y'all for having me on. Um, I guess one thing that, you know, that I pride myself on here at the shop is I wanted to, I wanted it to be like uh, open for all people. You know what I mean? Not specifically a, a black barbershop or, or whatever. <clears throat> That's right. I wanted, I wanted everyone who come in to feel comfortable sitting down in here without, you know, feeling like they're in, in the wrong place or maybe it's <laughs> spot for me you know what i mean every 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 uh head that comes in here uh 
Oh, so many white uh, patrons, you know, they say, man, you, you really, you really have a good environment here. You know what I mean? When you walk in, you, you feel welcome, you know, instead of uh, feeling like, a, you, you know, uh, a, you know, you're just standing out in the crowd. You know, they say every time you come in, here, you feel comfortable sitting down. Everybody get along with everybody. All the barbers are real cordial, you know, to the to the uh, guests, you know, and they say that this is always the place to come to get a good laugh also. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We, we just try to keep it like that, man. And, uh, you know, because all money is green. You know, ain't no such thing as black money, white money, whatever. It's green money. That's right. And, and, and we're here to generate it and uh, keep being a positive force in this community. Yes, Headquarters Barbershop is a barbershop for anyone that wants to get their hair cut, regardless of ethnicity or gender, none of that. Because I, I didn't say earlier, there, there, there's young girls and there's women that come in there to get their hair cut as well. So yeah. uh, regardless of, of gender, regardless of ethnicity, you can go to headquarters, barbershop, and salon. And see also, oh, go sorry, ahead, Jeff. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, also, you know, uh, we, are, we offer uh, notary services too. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So any, anybody need anything notarized or any documents uh, looked over and uh, notarized or made copies of or whatever, we can do all that here too. All yeah, right. Making moves. That's right. <laughs> Full service. <laughs> Full service. So we want to thank Mr. Jeff Barrett again, being on the show today with Avon and myself, Mario, Building Minds, Builds Community. Help somebody that don't look like you today. Right, exactly. Absolutely.